GamersLedge.com um, at Game at the GameStop Expo 2014. It's been a long day already. Um, <laughs> I'm here with uh, Bob Roberts, um, who is a remind me one more time. I'm a lead designer on Shadow of Mordor. Lead designer on Shadow of Mordor. If you couldn't tell, Shadow of Mordor. Um, so I got a I got to, a chance to play a little bit earlier with um, play this game a little earlier with you. There were a lot of features that I didn't expect, quite frankly. Um, one of them being the Nemesis and how that and how that works. So, um, could you go into a little bit of detail? Sure. Yeah, the Nemesis system is like it's the key innovation we're trying to bring to the genre to do something new. That uh, the basic idea of it is all the bosses and sub bosses in the areas around you in the open world are procedurally generated. They're dynamic. They're never going to be the same in any two playthroughs between you and your friends. They all have different looks and personalities and strengths and weaknesses and uh, and not only that but they'll remember you and they'll build a history with you and they'll evolve based on their interactions with you so uh, the way we do that is in our game time doesn't move forward uh, time doesn't rewind and re restart from a checkpoint when you die it actually moves forward so rather than replaying the last few minutes over like it never happened and wiping the memory of that encounter from that boss's mind uh, he actually remembers defeating you and he can call you out on it next time uh, or he remembers a lot of different ways that, that that could have gone down. Maybe you ran away from him. Maybe he ran away from you because you were starting to get the best of him. Uh, that you can build these stories with these guys, and like any good villain, uh, they can also cheat death themselves. If you throw him into a fire, uh, he if you didn't take his head off, you're not necessarily guaranteed that he's dead. If he comes back all burned up and calling you out on it, he's going to be pretty mad. So uh, that that whole layer really creates a completely like unexpected dynamic story to emerge out of your relationship with the bosses and the enemies. But we wanted to take the relationship with the enemies even further. I mean, that's the thing you spend the most time with in a game, that uh, it's it's really all about the, the grunts too, the, the cannon fodder that are all around the world, the guys that are normally just faceless, copied and pasted versions over and over. For us, those guys are all procedural and dynamic too. They are all unique and if any one of those guys gets a, gets a cheap shot on you and takes you down, he has the potential to now become a low-level captain, a low-level boss in the world and, and work his way up through the hierarchy. And, and these guys are actually going off on their own missions while you're doing your thing in the world. These guys are battling and backstabbing their way to the top of the hierarchy too. So you can end up with a, a main boss at the end of the game who is a guy that might have started life out as what seemed like a faceless grunt in a horde of guys you were fighting. So really changing the relationship that you have with enemies was, was a big goal of the Nemesis system. That's awesome. So when we were looking at it earlier, there's a section that you can go into that actually shows Sor Sauron's army. And you can see the war chiefs. Is that right? Right. The war chiefs up top. Um, and they're the, they're the big bads and you can actually go hunting for them, but they're not by themselves unless you go into the world and hunt out their lieutenants specifically. Right, they all have, all the top war chiefs, they have bodyguards. And if you go straight for the war chief, it's not just a boss fight against him. It's a boss fight against him and his bodyguard. So it can be a triple, quadruple boss fight. You can have tons of chaos going on there, but we give you the, the tools to sort of control your own difficulty there. That if you want to just have the hardest possible experience, you can go right after that guy do a quadruple boss fight. But if you want to be slower, more strategic about it, you, yeah, you can hunt down individual bodyguards out in the world ahead of time when they're on their own, so that by the time you get to him, he's alone. Or this late in the game, the demo we're showing here, you're, you're powered up enough that you can not only just kill your enemies, but brand them, dominate them, and make them fight for you. So if you go around isolating those bodyguards and actually branding them, then when he comes out thinking he's got three guys as backup, they're actually right there ready to stab him in the back for you. So um, that was actually a really interesting thing that I hadn't seen. I haven't seen that type of special feature, I guess, or gameplay um, in any other game that I've seen where, um, for example, there's the large creature that I jumped on. The Graug. Yes, and it's like you were saying, it's like twice as large as a cave troll, like the ones that we saw in Lord of the Rings. I was able to jump on top of it and brand it and ride it around and use its attacks, which were fairly devastating. Um, that, so you can brand beasts and ride them. Yep. And yep. Um, what, what we were doing earlier, what he showed me this, how to do was that you took, I was able to take an orc that I think was just a grunt and um, brand him and then look into his mind and pull intel about one of these other chieftains that I hadn't yet unlocked. That's right. Um, so I thought that was genius. 
Yeah, any of the enemies in the world, yeah, they're, they're windows into learning about the captains. And, and if you, again, if you invest the time, rather than going into an unknown boss fight, you can learn his strengths and weaknesses. You can learn what he's vulnerable to or what he fears, and you can exploit that against him. And you can learn what he's strong at and what to avoid, what's going to enrage him and make him tougher. And Help a little bit with the strategy. Exactly. Not dying every yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. I have that problem. Um, so, there are other aspects of the game um, that we've seen a lot in the trailers, like there's a stealth mode, um, which is a, is a unique type of fighting system. There's a, there's a wide variety of ways you can fight. So we put a lot of effort into really balancing and tuning the melee combat to be really tight, but allow you to fluidly move back and forth between stealth if you want to sneak more, if you're more into that style of play. You can use your bow and have a lot of depth to the range mode system. Uh, of course, there's the sandbox where you've got beasts. All those beasts are, they're not all friendly to each other. They'll fight each other and you can unleash them on each other to create chaos. Oh, wow. You light them all on fire. You just <laughs> brand and dominate the orcs and pit them against each other. You can create all kinds of chaos in the sandbox. So we wanted to give you an open-ended set of goals and a lot of tools and a lot of strategies to work with and let you just solve the problems how you want to solve them, you know? Uh, and then, of course, layered onto that is the whole nemesis system where all the interactions you're having with your enemies while that happens are evolving and constantly shifting and kind of challenging different aspects of that play. Right. So if you get you too used to, you know, if you're doing really well with stealth, you get too used to it, you're always going to bump into a captain eventually that's one of his particular strengths is that he can't be taken down with stealth. So they'll, they'll always keep challenging and that's poking awesome. at him. So there isn't, there isn't going to be one focus that if I focus on that specific type of fighting... There's no one-size-fits-all win-the-game yeah. strategy. you got to keep evolving and, and keeping an eye on how things are changing around you. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, take it from me, uh, this game, it looks killer. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, I, this is one of the must-buys for me for, for this expo, absolutely. So um, thank you very much. I really appreciate the interview. Uh, is you. there anything that you want our viewers to know just off the shelf that we haven't talked about? We've been talking a lot about the Nemesis system because it's the big new thing and it's the heart and soul of the game. But I think a lot of people might lose track with how much we're talking about that. The fact that this is a big open world game, it's got a lot to do. It's not just about these enemies either. There's the, the core storyline is actually a non-linear story on the, uh, that was written by the lead designer writer on Red Dead Redemption. Oh, really? So we've got a really killer story in there too with uh, uh, very you know tight character missions with Gollum, with some new characters that you won't have met before. And then there's all the side activities, there's the collectibles, the history, the layers of stories in, in Mordor <laughs> that you can discover on top of all this awesome stuff with the Nemesis system. So it's a big it's a big experience with so a lot to do. So it's going to become light, you're saying. Yeah. I will I will lose all attachments to all other life. So if you die, what happens to your friend in you? Oh, um, earlier we were mentioning the the uh, what happens when you die, what happens to the Oh, the vendetta system the vendetta where system. uh because the, the enemies that they kill you, are they're all procedural and unique to your game. No one else will ever see that guy that killed you. So what we do is uh, occasionally we'll take a guy that killed you and we'll send him off to your friend's games as a vendetta mission where uh, they'll be asked to avenge your death, essentially. They can take that on and kill the guy that killed you and you'll both get rewards from it. So that's a fun way to share the sort of personal enemies that you build here. Right. It's a little bit of, a little bit of multiplayer play in um, what's the what's the length that you think for this campaign? Uh, overall, I mean, it's a it's a sandbox with the Nemesis system infinitely generating new bosses and <laughs> missions. So it all depends on how much you want to get lost in those systems right. and play and poke. Uh, on average, though, when we bring a bunch of people into the studio and have them play beginning and end, it's a wide wide range. But the average is probably around 25 or 30 hours. Uh, and then, of course, you can go after you finish this campaign and just keep mining the sandbox Taking and finishing all the other side activities and all that stuff. So, so infinite. Infinite is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I think that covers it for us. Great. Um, again, thank you so much for the interview. We yeah, really thank you. It. And um, have a wonderful day. Yeah, you too.